Boys and girls, Miss Kelly here with another chapter of the BFG. This chapter is called A Trago Humper for the Flesh Slump Eater. Yesterday, remember when I read a trago humper is considered a nightmare. Okay, so the flesh slump eater is one of those nasty giants. They is always having 50 weeks before they go scumpering off to hunt human beings in the evening, the BFG said. He stopped for a few moments to let Sophie have a better look. Giants is only sleeping every then and now, he said. Not nearly as much as human beings. Human beings is crazy for sleeping. Is it ever occurring to you that a human being who is 50 is spending about 20 years sleeping fast? I, I must admit, that never occurred to me, Sophie said. Well, you should allow it to occur to you. Imagine it, please. This human being who says he is 50 has been fast asleep for 20 years and is not even knowing where he is. Not even doing anything, not even thinking. It is a funny thought, Sophie said. Exactly, the FD said. So what I am trying to explain to you is that a human being who says he is 50 is not 50, he is only 30. Well, what about me? Sophie said, I'm eight. You? You is not eight at all, he said. Human being babies and little chiddlers are spending half their time sleeping, so you is only four. I'm eight, Sophie said. Yeah, you may think you is eight. But you has only spent four years of your life with your little eyes open. You is only four, so please stop higgling me. Titchy little snapper whippers like you should not be higgling around with an old sage and onions who is hundreds of years more old than you. How much do giants sleep? Sophie asked. They is never wasting much time snozzling, he said. Two or three hours is enough. Well, when do you sleep? Sophie asked. Even less, he answered. I is sleeping only once in a blue baboon. Sophie, peeping out from her pocket, examined the nine sleeping giants. They looked even more grotesque now than when they were awake. Sprawled out across the yellow plain, they covered an area about the size of a football field. Most of them were lying on their backs with their enormous mouths wide open, and they were snoring like foghorns. The noise was awful. Suddenly, the BFG gave a jump in the air. By gum frog? he cried. I was just having the most wopsy whiffling idea. What? Sophie said. Wait! He cried, hold your horse feathers. Keep your skirt on. Just you wait and see what I was going to bring about. So he galloped off back to his cave with Sophie hanging on tight to the rim of the pocket. He rolled back the stone. He entered the cave. He was very excited. He was moving quickly. You stay where you is in my pocket, Huggy Bee, he said. We are doing this lovely bit of buck both together. So he laid aside the dream catching net that hung on to the suitcase. He ran across to the other side of the cave and grabbed the long trumpet thing the one he had been carrying when Sophie had first seen him in the village. With the suitcase in one hand and the trumpet in the other, he dashed out of the cave. What is he up to? Sophie wondered. Keep your head up good, he said. Then you will get a fine wiggle of what is going on. When the BFG came near to the sleeping giant, he slowed his pace. He began moving softly. He crept on his toes toward those ugly brutes. They were still snoring loudly. They looked repulsive and filthy and diabolical. The BFG tiptoed around them. He went past the gizzard altar, the blood battler, the meat ripper, the child chewer. Then he stopped. He had reached the flesh on beaver. He pointed at him, then he looked down at Sophie and gave her a big wink. He knelt on the ground and very quietly he opened the suitcase. He took out of it the glass jar containing the terrible, nightmarish troggle hump. At that point, Sophie guessed what was going to happen next. What do you think he's going to do? I, I think you know. Ouch! She thought this could be rather dangerous. She crouched lower in the pocket so that only the top of her head and her eyes were showing. She wanted to be ready to duck out of sight very fast should anything go wrong. They were about ten feet away from the flesh on Peter's face. The snoring, snorting noise he was making was so disgusting. Every now and again, a bubble of spit formed between his two open lips. And then it would burst with a splash and cover his face with saliva. Taking infinite care, the BFP unscrewed the top of the glass jar and tipped the squiggling, squirming, fainting scarlet troggle humper into the wide end of his long trumpet. He put the other end of the trumpet to his lips. He aimed the instrument directly at the flesh on Peter's face. He took a deep breath, puffed out his cheeks, and then woof, he blew. Sophie saw a flash of pale red go darting towards the giant's face. For a split second, it hovered above the face, then it was gone. It seemed to have been sucked up by the giant's nose, but it happened so quickly, Sophie couldn't be sure. We'd better be skittling away quick to where it's safe, he whispered. So he trotted off for about a hundred yards, then he stopped. He crouched low to the earth. Now, he said, we is waiting for the gun and flames to begin. They didn't have long to wait. 
The air was suddenly pierced by the most fearful roar Sophie had ever heard, and she saw the flesh lump eater's body, all 54 feet of it, rise up off the ground and fall back again with a thump. Then it began to wriggle and twist and bounce about in the most violent fashion. It was quite frightening to watch. Yow! roared the flesh lump eater. Ay, yow! He's still asleep, the cat whispered. The terrible, troggle nightmare is beginning to hit him. Serves him right, Sophie said. She could feel no sympathy for this great brute who ate children as though they were sugar lumps. Save us, screamed the flesh lump eater, thrashing about madly. He's after me. He's getting me. The thrashing of limbs and the waving of arms became more violent by the second. It was an awesome thing to watch such a massive creature having such mighty convulsions. It's Jack, bellowed the flesh lump eater. It's the grootful. Grunches, Jack, Jack is after me. Jack is whack crackling me. Jack is spike sticking me. Jack is splash plunking me. It is the terrible fright swiping Jack. The flesh lump eater. The flesh lump eater was writhing about over the ground like some colossal tortured snake. Oh, spare me! He yelled, Don't hurt me, Jack. Who is this Jack? Sophie's what? Sophie asked. Jack is the only human being. All giants is afraid of, the BFG told her. They is all absolutely terrified of Jack. They is all hearing that Jack is a famous giant killer. Save me, screamed the flesh lump eater. Have mercy on the poor little giant, the beanstalk. He is coming at me with his terrible spike sticking beanstalk. Take it away, I is begging you, Jack. I is praying you not to touch me with your terrible spike sticking beanstalk. Us giants, the BFG whispered, is not knowing very much about this dreaded human being called Jack. We is knowing only that he is a famous giant killer and that he is owning something called a beanstalk. We is knowing also that the beanstalk is a fearsome thing and Jack is using it to kill giants. Sophie couldn't stop smiling. What is you griggling about? The BFG asked her, slightly nettled. I'll tell you later, Sophie said. The awful nightmare had now gripped Great Brute to such an extent that he was tying his whole body into knots. Do not do it, Jack, he screeched. I was not eating you, Jack. I has never eaten human beings, I swear. I has never gobbled a human being in my all wholesome life. Liar, said the BFG. Just then, one of the flesh lump eaters, flailing fists, caught the still fast asleep, meat gripping giant smack in the mouth. At the same time, one of his furiously thrashing legs kicked the snoring, gizzard-gulping giant right to the guts. Both the injured giants woke up and leaped to their feet. He is swiping me right in the mouth, yelled the meat gripper. He's barn swaddling me, smack in the guts, shouted the gizzard gulper. The two of them rushed at the flesh on Peter and began pounding him with their fists and feet. The wretched flesh on Peter woke up the bed. They woke from one night nightmare into another. He roared into battle, and in the following thumping rough and tumble that followed, one sleeping giant after another either got stepped upon or kicked. Soon, all nine of them were on their feet, having the most almighty free-for-all. They punched and kicked and scratched and hit and butted each other as hard as they could. Blood flowed, noses went crunched, teeth fell out like hailstones. The giants roared and screamed and cursed, and for many minutes, the noise of battle rolled across the yellow plain. The BFG smiled a big white smile, but absolute pleasure. I is loving it when they all is having a good puff and rumble, he said. They'll kill each other, Sophie said. Never, he answered. Those beasts is always fishing and walloping at one another. Soon it will be getting dusky and they will all be galloping off to fill their tummies. They're coarse and foul and filthy, Sophie said. I hate them. As the BFG headed back to the cave, he said quietly, We certainly was putting that nightmare to good use, though, wasn't we? Excellent use, Sophie said. Well done, you. All right, that's it for today. Tomorrow's chapter is called Dreams. And I will see you then. Okay, I miss you. Have fun. Happy Easter. Stay safe. Wash your hands.